Have you ever had the temptation to barter your own sanity just so you can beat a modern fast-paced shooter with the 40-year-old controller? Or maybe you've dreamt of systematically destroying heretics while simultaneously revolutionizing motion control gaming. I don't care if you answered any of those questions, this video is for you. Can you beat Doom Eternal with the Nintendo Power Glove? Now you may be wondering, how is he going to get a controller that rarely even worked 40 years ago to work with a modern video game? Sit down and I'll give you the quick spark notes on how this all works. This device, given to me by a mysterious benefactor whose identity will be kept private to protect him from the US government, allows me to plug the Nintendo Power Glove into my computer and use it as a mouse and keyboard. The glove itself has not been altered and still works as it did 40 years ago. Playing Doom with the Power Glove is plain and simple. You plug in the glove, load up Joy to Key, and then hopelessly watch as you receive a Texas-sized ass f***ing. All because the controller only decides to work when it wants to. Whether or not this Power Glove is always functional functioning correctly is questionable. But here at the Senza HQ, we, we don't ask questions, we answer them. With the help of augments that are sure to enhance my gaming capabilities, will I be able to take on the con maker? Will platforming sections even be possible when my controller literally sucks truck stop diaringus water through a straw? Well, I want you to sit back, grab your preferred refreshment, and aggressively massage that like and sub button. Let's find out the answers to these questions together. Doom Eternal is a violence simulator that is developed by id Software and used by the US government to turn any boy into a man. You play as the Doom Slayer, Earth's last beacon of masculinity and hope. Convincing these beings to seize their taint snorkeling is no longer an option and also just isn't in the Doom Slayer's DNA. This is where we come into play, here to assist humanity via the methods of Power Glove extermination. My experience boner was at full mast. Having tackled both the entirety of Skyrim and Borderlands 3, I thought this was going to be nothing but a walk in the park. But it is in my civic duty to let you guys know that you have clicked onto this video to watch the game play me, not me play the game. The introductory level was where I came to the realization that this run was a complete mistake. The Power Glove, unfortunately, has always had a bad name for it. Ever since its release, people who bought this budget Thanos gauntlet fell victim to owning a $150 device that only worked 5% out of 100% of the time. So if the gamer men back then could barely play a side scroller with this glove, then what makes me think that I could play a game made in 2020 with it? During the R&D phases of my Power Glove training, getting Hurricane Dick slapped was a common occurrence. Happiness during a run like this is an intangible resource, especially when my face is getting caved in every 30 seconds by Olympic ass-beating gold medalist. But there was one thing that could aid me in this noble conquest, using an older save with full health upgrades and weapons. You see, sitting there and telling your enemy the good ol' hold up, my glove isn't working excuse isn't really viable when they are already making you double shit your panties. So although many of you would disagree with this move, I would say go fuck yourself. How about you go play through this game with the power glove? Here we were again, ready to tackle the first level with my power glove and the Doom Slayer's overwhelming and girthy arsenal. Playing this game with this controller pretty much gives you a front row seat as your nightmares come to life, experiencing the video game equivalent to sleep paralysis. Easy difficulty, 300 health, and sentinel shield. That all didn't matter when you can't even aim at your enemies. But even through these trials and tribulations, and with all of the 1600 languages there are out there on planet Earth, I decided that today, I would speak only violence, even if it took a few poundings to get a sentence across. Half-assedly, I made my way to the first hell priest and confronted the f for not responding to my Snapchat from earlier, an action that brought only death. With the demonic corruption now reduced by 36.8%, the other 63.2% only made the Doom Slayer's penis harder. Although getting my form and technique correct took me a lot longer than I would like to admit, it was nice to know that having my dash this early into the run made the platforming sections a lot easier, which was a plus since these malignant tumors will encourage unhealthy man-childlike outbursts later on in this run. Okay, no, I'm fu- Eat my fucking ass, man. Fuck off me.
Besides the power gloves insatiable appetite for not wanting to work half of the time, Hell on Earth went a lot easier this second time around. Only two deaths compared to the 83 I had on easy difficulty with the fresh save. 11 out of 10, best hemorrhoid I have ever received. After surviving with but a gooch hair's worth of health and killing the bare minimum to proceed forward, I met with the group of cum stains better known as if mustard and Vienna sausage water was a person. I let them know that this fursona and power glove was a rental and any damages dealt to it would result in them paying the incidentals with their lives. Of course, this led to the con maker threatening to nerf me, but little does she know that was already a part of the script. I mean, I had this power glove already, so I, there's not much you could do from here. Exaltra was next for the Doom Slayer and I to tackle. Much like the Raid Shadow Legends and AFK Arena sponsorship deals I get on a weekly basis, the demons were only going to get more and more persistent. But thanks to this sexy little thing, passage through these gruesome lands and dealing with the shitheads that were going to rim my asshole was going to get a whole lot easier, because we should all know what rhymes with Super Shotgun. Lead enemas. Id Software, of course, went for the low-hanging testicles and started throwing flying enemies at me. Kaka demons, when you have aim equivalent to an older gentleman with Parkinson's disease trying not to hit the toilet seat while taking a piss, is not something I would ever want any of you to experience. A trivial platforming section later, and I was on my way to let God know I was stealing his sacred butt plug to assist me in this holy inquisition. You see, God and I had a close relationship, tighter than a pair of leggings, but I had a job to complete, even if that meant that I was going to defy his will. Just like Jeff Bezos stepped down from Amazon to spend more time with his money, I was going to have to step down from this comfortable life and enter hell. This section of Exultra took your boy a literal hour and a half to complete. I know, I know, speedrunners have completed this entire area within minutes, but great power comes with great responsibility, and also a massive electric bill. Coming up to the end of this level, this is where I realized that there was too much platforming in my shooter. This was bad. I spent two hours attempting this platforming section, and I... Two f***ing hours. I'm not sure if it's just because I don't have a super cool gaming chair or drink enough Mountain Dew game fuel, but with the power glove, this felt impossible. With how often the power glove disconnects from the sensor bars, keeping up the momentum to complete these parts was just not feasible. Even if I had a good run going at one point, RNG would just f*** me in my ass and the glove would decide to just stop working. We now had proof that id Software had singled me out in the power glove minority. This. This was absolutely disgusting. So what do I do? Give up? Have the dislike start to pour in? Or was I going to adapt, overcome, and try to squeeze and wring out a victory from this shit-stained underwear? Operation my dad told my mom I was inside the strip club in GTA 5, so I told her he was inside Lisa from accounting yesterday, was now in full effect. You may have caught on that the super shotgun was going to be the difference between life and sodomization for a majority of the combat this run. Risks were calculated, but clearly I am terrible at math. I thought I had this run all planned out, but I forgot to throw these platforming sections into the equation. Not even the prolific and prestigious ninja could assist me through this shithole. Only the second level of Doom Eternal, and because of my handicap, id Software decided to fuck me with these unskippable sections. With an L visible on the horizon, I didn't want to eject the cartridge just yet, so I quickly devised a plan. Firstly, we needed to make a few renovations to our gauntlet to get it more in line with its counterpart. With Infinity Stones in place, the glove was missing one more addition, a condom, to protect me from the turbo aids this run was surely to provide. I also tried to wear it as a fingerless glove, but it didn't work out, so you're gonna see it dangling for a majority of this video. It's glorious. Oh my god, it's glorious. Let me ask you one thing. Could Thanos simultaneously control his computer and play Doom Eternal with his gauntlet? I didn't f***ing think so. Piece of shit. Preparations were almost complete. The glove received a makeover. Waifu Marauder body pillow had been secured for $40. But what was I going to do about the platforming sections? We were going to use the glove in what I call D pad mode. Hopping into Joy to Key, I can simply make a control template that removes motion controls and allows me to just use its buttons. This was big, as the motion controls were the root of our problems. I can now use the D-pad for my movement and the A and B button to jump and dash, making these sections a whole lot easier, all while still using the power glove to get through the area. Now that we have discussed every small detail that has gone into making this run happen, let's get back to pain, which is a diagnosis and not a recommendation. 
we were back on track to finally completing the second level of the game. To my surprise, I was met by loving and caring friends after completing my Olympic training course. On my 14th try, staying in one spot and spamming my chainsaw is what got me out of there. The cultist base was where I was served a nice slice of humble dicking. This level has you tussle with the mancubus for the first time. These voluptuous creatures were thick, but not in the horny way, and didn't seem to take a liking to me and my power glove. I'm no doctor, but I'm positive that these mancubus now all had anal prolapses because they couldn't stop shitting all over me. My problem was that this controller only wants to comprehend half of the time. Now you may be thinking, oh, S Senza, BFG, Crucible, Senza, but those were off limits. We can only use those weapons canonically with the story. So the only option was to keep yeeting myself into there until I was able to succeed. I continued on with my ways of absolutely slaying no ass. And besides the occasional headache that came as a side effect to a few platforming bits, the only other difficult part of this run was when I freaky Friday'd with my girl, Lindsay. To save you guys from my rage fits that will have you guys playing with that volume button like a goddamn DJ, I'll just quickly explain to you why this trivial area took me an hour and a half to complete. The absence of my super shotgun and chainsaw became very apparent. Trying to pilot good old Lindsay here was a joke, as my joy to key commands were built for maneuvering the hunk himself. After about an hour, improvised survival was my only option. Once I located a decent spot, I sat there, drenched in sweat and in a deep concentration, crossing my fingers, testicles, and blood clots. On this day, gentlemen, the glove was on our side. We were survivors. And thank God, because I was about to fucking lose it. From here, I was on to the Doom Hunter base to face our first boss fight this run. This place will forever hold a spot in my heart because... Oh, wait, sorry, guys. Let me, um... As I was saying, this level will forever hold a spot in my... Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, the Doom Hunter base will forever hold a spot in my hemorrhoid... What the fuck? As you can see from the little demonstration I provided a few seconds ago, id Software had asserted its dominance all over my face. There were so many platforming bits that this was pretty much the final boss of all platforming levels. I'd rather sit bare ass on a box of razor blades than deal with this shit. Around an hour and 20 minutes later, I was at the Doom Hunter's gates, and unfortunately for that beast, the Doom Slayer grew up in America, where violence is their method of negotiation. Now here's a little pop quiz. Do you know how quick these Doom Hunters get around the map? If you said 10 miles per hour in their mobility scooters, then you are correct. Now think about little old me with this glove. This fight consisted of a whole lot of me standing still, chainsawing the helpless whenever applicable, and attempting to aim at the crackhead that refused to sit still for even a second. With a bit of thought, nearly every problem can be solved, even when using a power glove. With my aim being equivalent to that of a limbless child trying to play catch with his father, I needed to come up with a plan to take out these scooter using f**ks. I would have been doomed, pun intended, if it wasn't for sticky bombs, and this is where they came into play. This gun mod allowed us to strategically plant bombs on the ground and inflict splash damage around me. A whole lot of rage came out of this fight, but thanks to the combined input of these bombs, come. Oh, yes. Hey, that wasn't that bad. And this glove barely working. Fucking hell, dude. We were winners. There was only one being that held the title of Doom Hunter Wrangler. The Doom Slayer wanted his ass, and he was no longer asking. With the second Hell Priest down, it was time to move forward. The Super Gore Nest was pretty much an unaired season of Cake Boss, because the mobs here were caked the f up. I felt as though I was beginning to grab this bull by the nipples, but... The beauty of my craft at one point would have to be adulterated. Once I walked into this open arena, the southern blood of all of my enemies started pumping. My man Hugo was testing my strength, chucking all of Hell's forces right at my forehead. And coincidentally, my controller was working perfectly fine during this level, all up until this point. With quality of life questionably low, I turned to barrel stuffing my enemies and using sticky bombs. Even though I was up Shit's Creek without a paddle, the fact that I was pretty much a biological sledgehammer got me out of this one. But no amount of face f***ing could save me from this next feat. Id Software, once again, if you're out there watching this video, I would like you guys to consider offering me a medal. 
an award to commemorate the fact that I am probably the only person to fail the easiest time trial in the existence of video games. Not once, not twice, but seven times. A time trial and a power glove are never a good combination, but when it is, it is the best combination. Saying that this next level made me beyond soft would be an understatement. It's arguably one of the longest levels in the game and filled with creatures designed to reduce my life expectancy by 87%. That statistic, on top of the completely demoralizing ending of the last level, just made this stinky shithole even stinkier. These Reddit and Discord admins threw everything my way, with the free colonoscopy given to me halfway through the level during a demonic hell gangbang spit roasting session. I was well on my way to speed running and Sanity and imprisonment over at the Gotham City PD for all of my rage induced noise complaints. With the overpowering sensation that is the thrill of the hunt, I used my exceptional gaming skills to haul my ass through the teleporter and hit the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. I was here to solve this tentacle Armageddon, whether I wanted to or not. I continued forward as the self proclaimed savior of Earth, traveled through some alien ejaculate, used D pad mode to reawaken my inner athletic spirit, and dealt with a few too many heart attacks. Now this was where playtime was over. Where we were going, there would be no more fun dip and baby bottle pops to comfort us. Only the dried up teats of Lady Misery. The humans were beyond ecstatic to have me in their presence, which is typical because it's always sunny when I bring the D. But I was here for a reason, to kidnap Hayden and get creamed by IGN's favorite. There was no way out of this. I was guaranteed to be maimed, shot, and defiled for at least 30 minutes or my money back. Even the easiest difficulty had your boy crying in the club. I would say that this fight was a joke, but jokes typically have meaning, so I'll refrain. What happened to me here, I'm pretty sure could have been classified as some sort of crime, but I took those hits like a punching bag and slowly started to develop a plan. Using my power glove to even attempt to get around and kite the marauder just wasn't going to be viable this run. But when your controller and logic seem to fail, the only answer we can provide is standing still and praying to whatever god that is willing to listen. After learning the definition of of anal fissure, those prayers were answered. When reloading a checkpoint, there is a chance that the marauder's first instinct is extreme violence. Normally, I would be scared, but this, Don't this was it. perfect. No. He was designed to flail his axe around and speed up the process of my death, but this was my opening. My turn to send Mr. Public Enema number one to super hell. My power glove gripped its imaginary majestic hands onto the marauder's balls and didn't let go. Not even 60 seconds later, the marauder got the beat down of a lifetime, and this was a turning point for the run. I was euphoric, feeling like I could take on any being that came my way, but my mental strength stat being a solid 10 wasn't enough for the horrors that awaited me. The super shotgun's persuasiveness carried us through the majority of Mars core, and just because it was mandatory, I did perish a few times because... Yeah, I don't even need to bring this shit up anymore. You, you guys get it. A super fun and definitely not tedious platforming bit later, the Slayer was able to reconcile with his one true love. Not before, of course, turning Mars into a galactic fleshlight. This baby right here is scientific proof of what happens when humanity successfully weaponizes masculinity. The BFG only had two purposes in this universe, to make the Doom Slayer happy and to bring forth demonic genocide. I would say that this was probably the most annoying level this run. Whether it was the end portion arena of the level or the astronomical amounts of platforming, either way, after educating a few of Mars's immigrants on the many uses of lead and learning power glove chainsaw tech to bring me a victory, we walked out of this level in one piece and ready to kiss some more demonic hot boys. The final hell priest was on my radar. His days of bullying on the school playgrounds and stealing my Mega Man Battle Network blue during during PE class would soon come to an end. I won't forget that, Kevin. I know it was you. Of course, Pussy Boy Hell Priest had a champion to take me on instead of himself, which is fine, because who were they to challenge my ever growing arsenal of terrible jokes and massive biceps? My only shot at winning this was to pretty much AFK, as actually trying to dodge his attacks and killing the enemies around me didn't seem to work as I wanted it to. This genetic abomination needed to be murdered for the betterment of mankind, and I did exactly that. I was able to slap his cheeks on baby back bitch mode and the gladiator was nothing but treasure because you were going to need a shovel and a map to find his corpse. The crackhead parliament's last member was now branded a failure by a disabled doom slayer. This surely got the con maker's panties in a bunch and it was time to give her a taste of my chocolate starfish. 
Hayden informed me that the only way I was going to be able to save Princess Zelda was if I grabbed the Crucible, a sword of great power, and the key to the romance option that is f***ing the con maker and the icon of sin. This level nearly had me at my boiling point, as not only were there going to be two marauders, but also two f***ing arch vials. But there was no bitching. I now had a super weapon. I'll just save my only BFG shot for the first arch vial, and... We were off to a great start, but then I threw myself in between a rock and an erect penis. I shot my load far too early. This was not intended, and truthfully, I didn't sense the gravity of this situation till after I killed the Marauder and got to the first arch vial. Seeing as the device that can one-shot one of the most annoying enemies in the game had run out of ammo, I couldn't just throw a game shark into this bitch and spawn some more out of nowhere. We had two options, restart the level to get the ammo back, or be a f***ing man and fight the grease ball head on. Seeing as I already made it this far, I was going to have to take it like a champ and deal with whatever would come my way. Let me tell you now, this went about as smooth as sandpaper. For those out of the loop, this being can conjure enemies that are OP as f the only way to nerf them is by arch vile euthanization. Any gamer that graduated kindergarten would know that hunting down the arch vile is a top priority. But the problem was, was that I was using a power glove. Any close quarters combat would lead to a DBZ teleport across the map, which in turn would involve me having to go find him once again. I don't think I have ever died this much in a run before. I legitimately lost count. This area was overbearing, yes, but after throwing myself at it for around two hours, I was finally able to get a little peeky at the arch vials off white jordans and took my shot this 2000 and come face odyssey was over and man did this shit get me pumped after dealing with an infection that has stricken fear in the hearts of many gamers ever since the first release of Super Red Luigi Bros, this platforming section, alternatively known as a water level, took up most of my time. After awkwardly swimming around and screaming obscene things, I made it to the second arch vial room. Conveniently placed so that I could break the chains of sodomy and torture, id Software finally was on my side, and the BFG assisted me in doing what it does best. I retrieved the hilt of the crucible, but here in the lands of Terras Nabod, victory is not an option. If I had to choose a superpower, my first pick would be to be able to withstand a hit to the ankles with the scooter. If I had a second option, it would be to kill a marauder with the snap of a finger. These beasts here are just made to make my life significantly more difficult. Cock and ball torture was my only escape from this hell. A price I'm willing to pay to bring you all entertainment. The crucible was forged and damn, she was a bad little thing. Instead of following the final processes of blacksmithing, that is quenching and tempering a blade, the doom slayer went straight to placing it into the sweaty, fart-filled assholes of his enemies. We do not question his authority, only accept it. Thankfully, I had a key binding planned out just for this sweet little thing, and after going on a rampage, it was time to take on the con maker. For time's sake, I'll be skipping over Necrovol 1 and 2. Make no mistake, these areas were a real pain. I mean, literally, because one of my main forms of dealing damage to the enemy horde was full-on BDSM meat tenderizing myself. After around 20 minutes of channeling my chakras and focusing all of my energy on pinpoint accuracy, she was dead. And for the rest of these levels, I did have to have my diaper changed a few times. But Minotaurs and Marauders couldn't stand the likes of a gamer like me. The gates to Erdak were opened, and it was time to pay Kanye a little visit. Here on Erdak, things were already going great, thanks to this alien race that was clearly more advanced than we ever will be. Fuck vehicles for transportation. These guys had the Halo 3 Forge man cannons mastered to a T. Masculinity personified over here busted in on Kanye's yearly murder ritual and injected the icon of sin's heart with a little bit of that cold steel an innovative way to piss off kanye even more than she already was our challenge would begin here i'll be honest gentlemen i'm a little embarrassed to tell you that i died an astronomical amount of times during this crusade but there was no more being a bitch beyond this point i had to suck it up grow some hair on my testes and just accept any further power glove related doom slayer injuries hopium and praying to the waifu marauder mommy milkies above was not enough this was character building i was learning so much about myself and building up a tolerance towards platforming and demonic alien aids. But 
it's time to slow things down. Come over here and sit on Professor Senza's lap as I explain to you all how I was caught with my dick in my hand and trousers around my ankles. We were in the con makers WWE rink and she was not happy, hitting levels of Super Saiyan that even Goku would have wet dreams about. But there was no time to bask in her marvel. We had violence to attend to. I thought that on easy and with Sentinel mode activated, I would be able to steamroll Kanye within a couple of tries. But as always, I was face fucked by my own ignorance. The main problem this fight was her constant movement. Not only was speed a problem, but this celestial anomaly could also heal all of the damage that had been done to her. We were going to need to purchase the entire life alert stock if I wanted to even see the light of day. Yes! We're nearly there, baby! Come on. Switch to the fucking super shotgun. Come on! No! <laughs> also, to add to all of this, if there wasn't enough shit in this rim job, my controller would constantly decide to disconnect. I tried multiple weapon combos, staying in one place, making sure the game was on easy, and even killing the enemies around the arena. I was cursed. Not even suicide could help me escape the horrors of this self-made hell. After a few tries in D-pad mode, this was over. All I needed was a constant stream of ammo. If I could have unlimited ammo for my super shotgun available, I could most definitely super fuck the con maker into the ground. So here was my workaround. Unlike other fast-paced shooters, Doom encourages the usage of cheat codes. A single playthrough of the game would get you a majority of the cheat codes that are available, which can be toggled from the main menu of the game. One of those cheat codes would give us exactly what we wanted. After putting in my San Andreas cheat and hearing that glorious sound, I now had infinite ammo. To keep a bit of my dignity, I only allowed one of her health bars to be taken out with the BFG. The rest would be done with only the super shotgun. All it took was one death and a bit of following around, but I was finally able to take down that disgusting flying ball of feces. This move left me deplorable and stinky. I felt horrible for cheating even more than I already had this run, but a win with the power glove is a win, no matter how bad it hurts. And just so you know, I made sure to turn the cheat back off. The rest of the run was horrifying past this point, but this was okay, because I needed to pay for my sins. Everybody is a gangster, until they hit the final two levels of Doom Eternal with the power glove. To bring an end to this holy inquisition, I'll let you all know that I tackled the beast head on. Of course, death was included in this five piece beatdown combo, but thanks to my chainsaw and the crucible, I was able to slowly but surely defeat the icon of sin and technically beat Doom Eternal with the power glove. Think what you will, but I personally count this as a win. I wanted to be sure to refrain from using any other controllers except for the power glove, and I did just that, even though <laughs> I, I use quite a bit of cheat codes. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And if you want to head out on more future crusades with me, maybe even hit that sub button. This video was going to be the end of the power glove series, making it a trilogy, but I actually love doing these so much that I don't think I'll stop. For those curious, this run took around 80 hours of playtime, 600 gigabytes of footage, and this script alone was 9,000 words. I could finally end this project, bringing you content on a regular basis. If for some reason this is the only series you watch from me, the next game I'll tackle with the power glove is Cyberpunk 2077. Hey guys, Giga Future Senza here. The audio for this video was recorded back in February, and I just want to let you all know that I'm sorry for the late release. March came around and pounded me fucking silly. I, I normally don't like going into this type of stuff, but mentally it was probably one of the worst months of my life. On top of that, I just felt as though... I was turbo burnt out on editing these videos and making the 9,000 word scripts and then doing all these little ADHD induced micro edits um, just wasn't making it fun for me anymore, especially when I wanted to try and get these videos out in a timely manner. I think from now on to avoid this, I'll be taking a break from all those little micro edits and zooms and only throwing in good ones. I, I love doing this stuff for you guys and I love writing these scripts, but unfortunately like the, the edit was starting to get to me. This is just an update for the real ones out there that actually made it to the end of the video and was wondering uh, why dad left to the store and didn't come back. So I'm here now. I love you guys. I love making these for you. Thank you guys so, so much for letting this even be possible. I'm sorry for the absence, but then again, I I'm not because I needed to take a break and, and, and get a breather. But hey, we're back at it and kicking. Um, let's get ready for the next round, team. We got this shit. Also, I don't know how the fuck I almost completely forgot this, but in my last video, 
video, I did say if I didn't upload a video within two weeks, I'll be giving away my sealed copies of Shrek 1 and 2 on VHS. So be sure to look at my pinned comment on that. We'll be doing a giveaway. Unfortunately, it will only be for my viewers in the US. My little boys across the pond, I'm so fucking sorry. I know you really want these bad boys. Be sure to check that pinned comment and hop up in that raffle. I love you guys. Thank you all for watching. And thank you to the Diaper Booty Chairman for funding this video. Catch you all soon. Until then, be safe, wear a mask and a seatbelt, and remember, Daddy loves you.